Uh, we're going to get started here, so uh, if you would, please take a seat. If you need more chairs, I can fetch some more from the various other rooms at our disposal. Um, Yo. Let me fucking switch this shit back up. Yeah. Yeah. I can still be tall. They're comfortable. Anyone use chair? Any emotional support or anything? I would love some emotional support. That's too bad. You're in the wrong place. So, uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, welcome to the Game Dev Meetup. As you know, we meet on the third Thursday of every month, except for this month, because third Thursday is uh, Mardi Gras, and uh, we, the organizers, like to get fucked up as much as you guys do, <laughs> and we don't want to rob that from you. Uh, uh, so thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, thank you to Revelry, the company that I work for, uh, for letting us be here tonight. There's a lot of shit going on at scale where our meetup usually is, so uh, want to avoid the noise and commotion. Come out here, we're being a little more intimate, we can all get to know each other. Is anyone here new to the meetup? Never been here before? Do uh, you guys want to introduce yourselves real quick and say what, like, what you do, what you're interested in? Yeah, sure. Cool. Uh, I'm Harrison. I'm a student over at LSU, uh, getting my master's degree in digital media arts engineering. Um, I'm big into audio, Foley. I like to write as well, um, music, and writing stories as well. So that's about it. Uh, all right, hey guys, I'm uh, Sam here. Um, I'm a, a apprentice software engineer here at Revelry, and I love video games, so. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Hey guys, uh, Nick, I actually work at Microsoft, uh, and so we have one of our guys there is actually part of the program. Um, so I'm coming here to. And uh, see if there's any questions that I might be able to take back to tell my that I might be able to answer. Oh, uh, specific. Uh, are you referring to Game Camp? Yes, yeah. Game Jam. Sorry, that was the reason oh. why we came here. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I am also interested in video games. But <laughs> 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 that seems kind of like a you know pretty wrong example exactly. at this point. Uh, I'm at. Uh, I used to work with Nick at the Microsoft Store, but uh, I graduated from Southeastern Computer Science and software developer for. Uh, pool Corp on the North Shore, uh, but I've done a project in Unity once in school, and I'm hoping for some more inspiration to get back into doing some game development. So. Awesome. Just out of curiosity, how many people are like familiar with Unity as like a game engine? Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Okay. So, but close to me. Arms firmly crossed. <laughs> He's just grumpy. It's fine. Let him have his beer. So, um, what's going on? Nothing much. Uh, so, uh, today we're going to cover Global Game Jam Postmortems. So, for those of y'all that don't know, uh, the end of January, we had Global Game Jam here in New Orleans. So, that's 48 hours to make a game based on theme. Theme was prepare. Yes. So uh, we had a bunch of people that came out. I think there was about 30-ish. Yeah, that's that 30 people. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a great time. Some, there were some fantastic games that came out of it. We've got the team in the back over there. They won overall best game. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great time. And uh, so we're going to talk about that some more. Uh, this Saturday, we're going to uh, kind of meet up as a a group and go check out the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. <laughs> so if that's something y'all are interested in, uh, come talk to us afterwards. Look, and we uh, have to well, go to you because well, like, well, they <laughs> fixed everything about that. Movie. Yeah, when uh, last we checked, it had a 69% on Rotten Tomatoes. Nice. So it seems to be doing, doing pretty well. There were also that's no seats well, taken uh, at the 7:30 p.m. showing at Elmwood. Last I checked, so uh, if, if we you know, get our cards right. We'll have a nice group. It's a Mystery Science Theater 3000. It. <laughs> nice. So, it should be a good time. And uh, our next nice. meetup will actually be on the third Thursday of March, uh, March 19th. So, we typically meet at, uh, so, uh, formerly, or 
still Circle Bar, formerly Lee Circle. Uh, and then we walk around the corner uh, at 7 p.m. to scale co-working where we host regular meetups like this. They rotate every month, so be sure to come check it out. Uh, another bit of information is the Indie Bit Festival. So this is an interactive media festival that's hosted in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, one of the people that puts it on is part of the Louisiana Game Developer Discord. They, ex they extended their uh, their submissions till tomorrow. So if you have a small project you've been working on that you're finishing up or little game jam stuff that you kind of want to polish in the meantime, they're totally open to submissions. It's kind of all over the place from interactive experiences to small games. Uh, something we're both submitting stuff to and highly encourage everyone to, uh, to just throw the hat in the ring. Uh, so the biggest announcement is yesterday they made the announcement for Xbox Game Camp. So do you actually want to come up here and talk about it? So I don't know much about it. I know people that know a lot about it. <laughs> gotcha. Oh. Um, so I'll, whatever y'all got, y'all go off what y'all got. And if y'all have questions that y'all don't have the answers to, I can get back with y'all. That's a fantastic process. There's another guy awesome. that was actually one of the guys that's on the team. He was going to try and meet us for it happens. Yeah. Uh, it's going to run from April 21st to September 24th. Uh, it is free. This is actually the question I got. I got the most about. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. It's not an unpaid internship. Um, if you've ever done a game jam before, think of it as like a six-month game jam, where they help supply mentors, uh, codes for Unity, and Autodesk is also a sponsor. So. They'll, uh, they'll be flying people in to like, classes on using a lot of this technology. If you've never used it before, totally, totally cool. If you have, it might be a good refresher or a chance to learn some new things. Um, there's a dedicated space on Canal Street. Uh, they will have computers set up with the software, as well as a limited number of Xbox development kits. There will be a portal where you can sign up and you know, be able to like, block out time to meet up but it's generally going to be open. It'll also be where they meet for the kickoff, a mid-time, like a mid-period check-in, and a wrap event. So it's, it's going to be there for us to use as, as we need it. Uh, our Sydney and Autodesk, they're getting out these lessons. Uh, what's up? Um, is, are these the professional unity license as well? Uh, it'll I'm be sure. for the pro license. It'll be at least plus. Um, there's, as far as future parity goes, there is no difference between uh, the whatever the community version is plus and pro. Right. The, the, only, the only <laughs> distinction is dark mode, which is restrict, reserved for the plus of pro. Uh, they only force you to have pro if you make so much revenue. And same with plus. It's like you have to make $100,000 in revenue uh, making software with the community, and they force you to get plus. And then I forget the number above that to get. Yeah, if any of you are successful enough to find out that number, please let us know. <laughs> um, there are mentors. Part of that process is they hook each team up with uh, a senior in the games industry. Um, Microsoft Game Studios, such as NXile, Double Fine, Undead Labs. For the side, complete sidebar, Undead Labs makes a game called State of Decay and State of Decay 2. They made the announcement that they're moving, uh, they're opening a new studio in New Orleans. So, yeah. What was that company? Undead Labs. So they're currently based out of Seattle, is my understanding, or at least what they list online. New Orleans. Yeah. So wait, wait, we'll now have two Microsoft studios in the area. They're pretty dope. But, especially if they're coming here. A what? Yeah, yeah he's not talking about like college. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
on March 9th, the signups will go live and we'll start checking them out. We'll start pulling that stuff out. Uh, any questions about it? So, uh, are they, uh, do you, are we going to need to have our pitches ready for that date and submit it with our uh, application? Or? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it's preferable that you do have a team ready when you sign up. But if there isn't, then we can work with you as part of the part of the onboarding process to come to. Or if you have something ahead of time, that's just a, a bigger step up for you to get started. So, so um, uh, for anyone else who's just like I'm a musician and audio engineer as well, just so like this sounds like something I really want to be involved in. I should probably find a team to get involved with on the application, or just like. You're about to talk more about the application. But Don't worry, Andrew. I'm in here. Fuck. I'm a friend, bro. Yeah. So important. <laughs> Mr. Boudreaux. Thank you. That, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we will find a place for you. Okay, cool. Yes. So, that, yeah, so it's not like an individual thing, like you kind of have to find so a it, group to. Yeah, find a group. Uh, uh, part of this, I've got another slide, is there's Louisiana Game Developers Discord. Uh, we've got a QR code all up on here. Let's see if it's next. There we go. Uh, so I highly recommend joining this. Uh, there's a ton of developers all over the all over the city. Yeah, you're part of it. Um, city. There's some as far as Shreveport. They're all over the place. If you're interested in finding a team, definitely check this out. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, there you go. Well, cool. Um, yeah, uh, any other questions? If we uh, sign up for this and we start making our uh, whatever it could be, are we a uh, platform locked? No, okay. Okay. no, so you are not, uh, you are not obligated to release this game. You mm -hmm. are not obligated to release it only on Xbox. Yeah. They just have a support system there for you. Uh, in the past, mm -hmm. uh, games mm -hmm. that showed a lot of promise and stuff, they kind of helped, uh, kind of like, Forward them, and I don't want to say fast track, but more or less kind of get your get you in the door for ID and Xbox. Right? It was actually pretty funny when we had our meeting with the, the Xbox people, because they said uh, ideally pe more people would make just like normal desktop PC games as opposed to Xbox games, because then they would require less support. For <laughs> <laughs> Xbox <laughs> games, right? Yeah. 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 So, so, I mean. <clears throat> Um, are they, I'm just asking, are they using Xbox One Dev Kits or the you know, The new ones. The new ones, okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the new, <laughs> new ones systems. for the new thing? Yeah, for the uh, project. Uh, what is it called? Xbox One? Xbox Series yeah. X? Series. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Xbox. Not the One X. The Series X. No. Yeah, the series X. It's about to be really fun to forgot. It is just called the Xbox. That's their new console. Right. Just, yeah. just Xbox. And it's I already got series. one of those. Xbox, it's great. And this model is called it's the Xbox Reboot. It's going to be big. It's got a line green circle on the back. Yes. Uh, I think this is their third. They've definitely done one in Europe. Uh, Sweden, I think, was the one that yeah. had last. And I want to say like two or three of those wow. games actually became like really yeah. good. Uh, this is this is the first one in the United States. Yes. Yeah. First one in the US that came in New Orleans. They wanted some nice, diverse, and cultured places. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We all take pride in the fact that yeah. yeah. we're number one. Yeah. Something yeah. other. Yeah. So many other places. Yeah. 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 So many yeah. other yeah. 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 For this, do you yeah. have to have a team, or can you just go and experience the? If you want to do it solo, more yeah. power to you. So it probably depends on just that. Right. That, yeah. yeah. Also, so, I did hear we will be having some more like focus on like, Q and A style like sessions at the store. I don't yeah. know specifics on those yet because they haven't given those specifics yet. Um, but I do know they did say we'd be hosting like, some FAQ style like specific to the store. Okay. Okay. It's the store Lakeside Mall, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, Microsoft.com/slash/metery, and it'll have like a list of like uh, workshops. It'll be on that. Okay, Um I don't know yet. Again, like they haven't really given us much. If I had to guess I would hope so. Um, because they do know that it's kind of like 
open to a broader audience than just like right. those. So the, the one catch is you have to be over 18. Right. So like the, they're also <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they have reached out to uh, several uh, so all the schools in the area as well. Right. So there there's going to be a lot of people. I think they're they've got a lot of feedback on that and they're they're working on that. As last I heard, <laughs> as far as the age requirement. Okay, that, that's my last, last. It's currently eighteen. Yes, currently. <laughs> currently. Oh, I'm uh, scratching my head. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Very diligent of you. Sorry. But, but, no problem. Uh, I got I got your name. You got it. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll take it. Is that yeah. work full time? Can you do this? Can you do yeah, this? totally. I okay. mean, it, that's you know, that's another thing we I've, I've heard a lot is the the time commitment aspect is it's I ultimately it's like up to you and your team like how much time you spend like working on the game. They're not going to like require you to go down to the place and. Check work out. so many hours. Yeah. The only things that are like necessarily required is like the kickoff event, the like midpoint check-in, and then the like closing, you know, whatever. Uh, other than that, it's up to you to utilize the resources they have available to you as much as you can, as much as you want. They have like, they're going to have sessions and stuff with mentors and stuff to teach you specific things. If you don't want to learn any of that shit, you know, it's up to you. It doesn't matter. Make your shit do your thing. Have fun. Yeah. Uh, how do these sessions work? Are they online? Are they in person? Um, that's good. Um, that's a great question. Yeah, that, that would actually be a good one to follow up on. Like the, <laughs> like how the mentor process of like or men, or mentor element of that work. Yeah. Uh, I would assume it's very much a, a schedule that you agree upon with your mentor to check in, but that's mm. not something that's dictated to you. So this is, this is very much a cool opportunity, but you get out of it what you put into it. Yeah, exactly. Could you go back to the Discord QR code? <laughs> totally. And that's what we make. I just realized that that's the same part of the office when I'm looking at the uh, game camp fog. Oh, it looks like a very basketball fog. Uh, well, you know, no one's bound down. All of this. Uh, it is mentioned Unity and Autodesk lessons. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly going to be like specific dates and specific times that are going to be holding all the songs and things. Yes. So I have them yeah, posted on the website at some point. Yes. So I do know mm -hmm. that they are flying, like Unity is flying people into the lesson on, on their application. Mm -hmm. But there might, I would imagine they probably have some type of like virtual training or something like that. Unity is huge. Yeah. 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 And they also have a great team that flies around and gives presentations and lessons on. So it's, uh, I have that expectation, but if that changes, I'll let you guys know. Really yeah. We're going to get people. Yeah. <laughs> We're on yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but just in case, I will do one message. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. In case I will cancel the end. Okay. Cool. So, uh, there we get this. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. also leave it up at, afterwards. Yeah. Uh, but with that, we're going to roll right on through to these. We have more than two. So, uh, I, know you, I know you got one. Yeah. Uh, I see you're telling me I have to be able to leave. Uh, <laughs> I had that image on my computer, so I don't know <laughs> what that says about that. Says your boat leaves. Yeah, it is a pissing <laughs> contest. Uh, I'm going to leave that. So, you take it over. Um, I don't have like a presentation, I don't have a demo uh, prepared because this laptop that I brought with me is not only streaming this whole event right now, so don't say anything you wouldn't want on the record, I uh, guess. <laughs> I'd really like to say that, but whatever. <laughs> uh, but I will give you a little overview of how the Global Game Jam went. So uh, this year was our second year having the Global Game Jam here in New Orleans. As far as I'm concerned, it's the second ever Global Game Jam in New Orleans. So uh, go us. Uh, uh, the first year was here at Revelry in this exact room we're in right now. Uh, we had about 20 people, maybe nine-ish games or 10 games. Uh, 
Uh, this year we had 30 people and about nine games. So we grew audience-wise about 50%. We have pretty good growth. Uh, next year, if we grow at the same rate, it would be pretty horrible because you don't have to get a bigger spot. It might actually cost money. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the game jam is possible thanks to generous sponsors here in the city, uh, Revelry, which, you know, we're here in their offices, Scale, which is where we have the game jam at, um, and a bunch of other people, Turbo Squid, Kinemagic. Uh, High Voltage gave us some shit to give out. Um, Parallax um, Visions, which is the studio I run, uh, was in charge of it, so, you know. A lot of great participation from all these great companies in the city. Thank you to all of them for uh, letting us in. Um, but the game I made at the Global Game Jam was a game called Noah VR. Uh, it was a game in which you played as Noah of the art. Uh, <laughs> and after the floodwaters fell down, there will be time for questions after. You told me what the theme was. Repair. Uh, the theme was repair. So we all had 48 hours to make a game based on the theme of repair. Um, so our game was based on Noah of the Ark, uh, where after the floodwaters, the Great Flood went down, the Ark hit a large rock, a uh, land mass. Uh, and so the Ark was destroyed. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Bible or not, but uh, the Ark was supposed to be where Noah and his family lived after the Great Flood. Uh, so the Ark being in disarray was obviously not good for him and his family. So you were on a quest to repair the ark. But in addition to the ark being destroyed, the animals which he had brought onto the ark were all mismatched. So you had to repair the animals as well. Mm. <laughs> um, <and laughs> the way that you would repair the ark would be you go around matching the animals up. And then once you brought the, an animal to its correct mate, they would immediately have sex and produce an offspring as animals are not are known to do. You would then bring the offspring to an altar of Yahweh, our Lord and Saint, our Lord, and sacrifice the, the offspring to God, which you would then exchange uh, for wood, which you could use to repair the ark. <laughs> so you had to match all eight different animals together, uh, sacrifice their offspring to God, and bring the wood to the ark uh, to repair it. And uh, that, was, that was pretty much it. Um, we have representatives from some of the teams here uh, that can give post more in their game, talk about a little bit about the process of making it. I'm not going to tell you about the process of making my game because it's very dumb. Uh, <laughs> but if anyone wants to come talk. Do you have like a, a, a demo too? Or a oh, y'all want to give a demo? Uh, yeah, I figured just demo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay, so we can do this a number of ways. Like we didn't bring much to say, so I figured we'd just show it. And then... Yeah, yeah. So, uh, here you go. This is a good Members for our team is not here because he lives in Pensacola. So this is this is our team, <laughs> and uh, we made a game called Mecha Mechanic. Uh, I took some notes, just some stuff that we did. Uh, if, if you have anything to say, just, just jump in. Okay. So this is actually my first game game, and I pretty much did most of the artwork. Like the most of the programming. Yeah, uh, and this is my second game game. And uh, and I didn't bring any like social buffers to this one, so I just like showed up by myself, not knowing like who I'm gonna join or anything. And uh, and so like I'm I, I go to UNO and I like do Unity and and a lot of Git, and like uh, I showed up to this team and they're like, what is this game maker? And no collaboration tool whatsoever. And I'm like, oh god. And uh, so anyway, um, I remember the the two thousand two thousands. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's been a great experience, and uh, I'll tell you what I learned after just a quick showing of the gameplay. Can we do that? Gamer Studio version 1.4.
So our game is you, you are repairing a mech that uh, has to be repaired before Godzilla comes and destroys the city. And the way to repair it is you basically click on different parts of the mech, and then you get different mini games. And so you go ahead and try to complete the mini game. Oh God, I can't do it. Huh? Yeah. And so it's like basically, I guess, uh, Wario. Like it's it's similar to like Wario, where it's kind of the effect you're going for, kind of like those wacky, uh, things. Oh no, I failed. If you failed That's once, real. probably lost. And then, uh, oh, no! Oh, <laughs> so, it takes a while for him to get there, and then we lost. <laughs> yeah, that was our that was our game that we made in 48 hours, and I'm super proud of us. I'm just like, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, what was y'all's takeaway from, from the game? Uh, our takeaway? Definitely being realistic. Um, totally being realistic. Um, first started, we were like, we're going to have six monsters, we're going to have three mechs, all of these special effects, and then we were like, holy shit, we're out of time. One monster, one mech. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, cutting. Like, like, we had these huge ideas, yeah. right? And like, yeah, so just, just being adaptable mm -hmm. and, and just like, we checked in a lot with each other too. Yeah. Like every hour, we're like, "Hey, what are you working on? What are you doing?" And like that, I think that really helped us. Like, because without any kind of collaboration tool or like you know, like anything that you're know, working together, like you just have to be there in person and just be like, "Hey, like, is, is it all good? Are we on the same page?" Yeah, communication really was key. I felt in this. Like making sure that everybody's on the same page and open and like okay, this. I know we talked about putting this in, but it's not going to make it. And being adaptable. You showed up by yourself, also, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, like, being able to meet people and just immediately dive in. Right, right. And, like, 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 just to tell you about my selection process, like, I was going in, like, I'm going to choose a group that uses Unity because that's what I know and that's, like, I'm going to just do it. <laughs> and, like, like, but this team, like, they had a clear vision of, like, what they were going to do. Like, this is the game that we're going to make. And, like, everyone else was like, well, we're still kind of thinking about it. And this is, like, the first, like, 20 minutes. And, like, the first 20 minutes, they knew what they're going to make, and everyone's still kind of, like, feeling everything out. So, like, I'm gonna join that team. So like that's having like, a good clear vision I think was really important too. Did you learn a lot about uh game maker? Uh I, I learned it and forgot it like right <laughs> <laughs> School style, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, thanks y'all. <laughs>
Uh, and you can find people with dietary needs. Yes. Uh, yeah, there are some people with uh, gluten sensitivity, so this quick makes gluten free painting mix for those that period. Are they going to sponsor us next year? Uh, no, but they should. Wait, who's sponsoring us next year? Wait, this quick. This quick? This quick? Okay. Um, <laughs> um, you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> what, what didn't work was it was like I made the exact amount needed, and like there were maybe like one person that was like, "Oh, we we'll out." The next time I feel I have to bring more. Also, I had it in my head that like a mental grocery list to like buy fresh fruit so that I wasn't just feeding people carbs. And I totally forgot because I did not write my list, and I, I woke up super early to do it. Carb uh, yes. That's nutrition 101. Eat right. only carbs. That is true. That is true. <laughs> That's how you <laughs> lose weight. You just eat carbs. Yeah, stay um, <laughs> and, carbs uh, and seafood. Carbs and seafood. Fried Preferably seafood. Preferably carbs dipped in. Yes. Or seafood dipped in carbs. Yeah. And dipped in sugar ketchup. Yes. But, uh, no. Next time we're going to do it, you know, I'll probably do the same thing again or make something else. But yeah. Now that. Are in the same boat? Do we have something that's not us looking at our... Yeah, we do, but yeah, yeah. I, I prefer this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see my bald spot. You want to see the percentage like throwing my bald spot. Yeah, that's that's true. True. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, my computer is uh, oh, all hogged yeah. up. Maybe I'll just talk about it then. Okay, yeah. go for yeah. it. Oh, well. I'll screen um, share again. Well, yeah. We, we, um, yeah, I don't know why my computer decided to blow up. Um, anyway, uh, so um, I, I uh, got to the game cam without having a team or a topic or anything. And we were just kind of going around and uh, talking about the theme of repair. And none of the ideas I could kind of get around. I was trying to think about various things. And um, there was a coworker of mine there. And we decided to make a game in the language we use here at work, which is not very conducive to game making. Um, so we thought to take on the challenge of using um, uh, Elixir to make kind of a, a game. And uh, we decided to take the theme of repairing the city um, and so you played the mayor, and you had an approval rating. You started at 50% approval rating, and then um, various um, structures within your city would start to have problems, and then you'd have to assign work crews to that, and you'd start getting more problems, and you'd get like a little ticking news ticker where the newspaper would start announcing that you're not handling problems, or you solve the problem, you're the hero. And so your approval rating would go up and down, and if you got uh, below 20%, you'd be kicked out of office. Or if you got like, on level one, your first term, they were a little more forgiving. You got you got seventy percent approval rating. You got reelected, and then each term would get tougher, um, and then you would try to go for your four terms. And so it was basically a time management game because uh, you start with just three crews, and the maximum you can assign to any one task would be three, and uh, and then you solve it quicker. And so each one you get a problem that has a timer that's going through, and then you have to assign crews, and it would have a timer to solve. And so it was one of these kind of more frantic games where you start clicking around and you have to strategically place your workers to solve the problem. That was our game. And it was pretty fun. Um, and so my takeaway was, again, kind of like what everyone decided, our original idea was to be really complex. We were going to have mini games, and when you click on a problem, you were going to then go take it to a mini game where you would do things like rotate pieces, <coughs> like, like connect a circuit. And, we had to bag all of it just to kind of start narrowing it down um, to, to get it just to a core idea. Um, and so that was kind of a challenge. It was fun. And all based on New Orleans as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so it was every, every single problem was New Orleans based. Yeah. Um, and so I, uh, I was in charge of the flare tech. So that was kind of at like so whatever, midnight, on midnight on the second night. I was like frantically coming up with a whole bunch of flavor tech. Mm -hmm. So was the mayor uh, the former owner of the internet company that now has complete control of the city of the internet? Um, well, I mean, one of the problems that you did have happened at the DMV where you had a cyber attack. Yeah. Um, and so that is, you had to assign your work crews to try to, like, get it. And either, you know, you got hacked or you didn't. So. <laughs> there was a hard rock? Uh, there was definitely no, a hard rock. No, yeah, no, you, had to, you had to assign your three crews. And if you failed, you know. <laughs> that one you need lawyers for it. Yeah, yeah, that's just, yeah. Even so if I, you I try succeed. to make it fun. Yeah, I'm kidding, I'm square. DLC. Yeah, so DLC and lawyer. I'm just curious, how do you do, like, how is the graphical interface with the links? So, so what we decided to do was to make it kind of gamey. We used, um, they have something called uh, Phoenix Live View, 
Um, and so basically it's, it's socket based. And so when you have your live view template up, it, um, it mounts it and then it puts like listeners on there. And so then basically when you have, and we, we made it mainly click events. And so the first thing we do when it mounted was we set up a game loop, which we set up a second timer. Was it a standalone application or was it in a browser? Um, no, it was a, it, we have a way to deploy it. It's a website. You can all go to it. Like okay. on the Global Game Jam site, you have it. So if y'all want to play it, <laughs> download it. Um, I have it posted on my Heroku or uh, on, on my partner's Heroku. And so, yeah, we just made a website. We just deployed the app. Nice. Um, yeah, so, so it's just a, a fully deployed web app. But yeah, but basically with, with Elixir Live View, um, we had the game timer, and then we would make events happen with some algorithm. You know, we would do like some mod version of whatever time it was, roll a random event. And then each level of difficulty, we would play with those numbers. So events would come more fast and furious. Um, <coughs> and then, you know, and then, so we would be able to adjust all that. And then, and then listen for the click events. Each, um, each building had a click event. And then we would randomly assign when the events would happen to which, which building to go to. So we kind of had timers within timers within timers. So you had a timer, game clock, and then each event would have a timer, and then each time you assigned a work group would have a timer. So it's kind of multi-layer timer. Time timer. It was fun. I just want to highlight that their group won uh, Best Use of Team, and they were awarded this wonderful trophy that I made 30 minutes before the jam started. <laughs> <laughs> so it is you, beautiful. If you want to win a very similar trophy, and be on the lookout for next year's Global Game Jam, <laughs> where I will make the trophies more than 30 minutes before the jam starts. So it's going to be a block of wood? Uh, they might be a block of wood. Oh, I'm sure it's the cameras, so people nice on the internet, it, but no one's watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a nice sand would be good. I find that you can, uh, you have like a glass tile, you can etch the back of it, and uh, it looks really <laughs> sweet. I don't know, Christian? Yeah. So I made a uh, game called The Intrepid Affair, which, but it was made to go with uh, to play with uh, Amazon Echo or Alexa. Just use, and it was Alexa skill. Uh, I actually kept, I actually kept my scope so well. I uh, my scope, I made my scope so small because I have experience doing game jams with these narrative style games I like to make. So I was able to keep it underneath like a thousand words. Uh, of tech, you know, dialogue and text. Uh, I actually got done at 9 a.m. the morning, about six or seven hours before the jam. I ran into a problem, and this is a lesson to learn. My, uh, I couldn't connect to the, I couldn't upload it. Uh, I had issues with, uh, I, the game was finished. I could play it on my computer. I could not upload it to my device, or nor uh, upload it to Amazon, and I had to do like eight hours of troubleshooting to figure out the problem and then I found that the problem was is they added an update to the tool I was using it did up update the back end on their end so then I had to be like well I need to either rewrite the entire back end and node and react or I'm just not going to get the game done and it ended up I couldn't get it done in time and at least no time I could still demo it but I didn't get it done but I got the game done. It was, it was all about uh, you're on a you're up, you're in space. Your ship, cr not crashes but fails, and you have to talk to an AI to repair things like it, you're on Star Trek or something. And it was insp inspired by Apollo 13. That was the movie. That was the one that. Uh, that was the one that blew up. Yeah, that was the one that blew up. That's what was the main inspiration for this. Um, <laughs> and obviously. <laughs> And, look, and obviously, it was metaphorical for real life because it blew up in my face. So, <laughs> so, so what was your takeaway? Uh, my takeaway was make sure your tool works before you actually uh, develop your game. That's, that's a good takeaway. That's um, a good takeaway. Do you, do you still have like the, the like decision tree, like the conversation? Yeah, tool? I have the decision tree. I so could you remake it like Twine? Or uh, no, I, did, uh, I actually did remake it in Twine. Nice. Um, and then uh, I'm also... Uh, I'm, like over the last week, I remade it in another language called Jolo, which is what I should have done in the first place. Like if I had to do this all over again, I would have made this in Jovo and so it would have deployed uh, really easy. So Jovo being a it's like a, a platform uh, agnostic version it, of it's uh, yeah. made, it's a it's sort of a JavaScript library uh, 
it's made to take in SSML, which is a uh, spoken. Hold on, I'm trying to remember that. It's a markup language for speaking, uh, yeah. internet speaking for uh, software, spoken software markup language. Something that like it? that. Yeah. yeah. So, and it uh, it can translate to Google Assistant, uh, Alexa, and uh, dialogue flow, which then transfers to Facebook Messenger and pretty much anything that has a bot, so Slack, okay. uh, Discord. Um, and I built that over the last week, and I have it set up in the market. I have it waiting to be approved by Amazon Marketplace to be put on the Alexa app, so I will have an official cane for once on Ooh. a market that isn't itch.io. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anything, but if anyone who didn't release something wants to talk about the time they had, and how fun it was, and how much people should participate next year. It's great, you should totally do it next year. Thank you, Christian. I was talking about <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What's up? Uh, I volunteered over at LSU. Just, how, uh, how was it? I was good. Uh, I was just there watching overnight, yeah. and uh, I got to see a lot of cool games over there at LSU. Um, some people had some really nifty ideas with it. One guy, one people, they really took Doki Doki Literature Club as inspiration. Oh, they, hell made, yeah. they made a novel of it, and I saw the screen, and the background was a classroom, and I started having night terrors again. <laughs> so uh, it was just interesting to see how people took the theme and made it their own. You know, a lot of space too. So that was a very common theme. One group was kind of anti-space because they're like, everyone's going to do space. Let's do something different. Were there any biblical based games at LSU? No, there were not. Well, that's how you know New Orleans is better, because we <laughs> stay true to the culture. <laughs> it's, it's All right. really, was I the only person that did space? No. No, 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 no someone asked. Asked. Uh, guy yeah, asked asked right. yeah. Well, boy, Zach, right here, actually, he's in the chat. He's hey. watching oh. the live stream. Hey, Zach. 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 He wasn't here tonight. But. Best sound winner, Zach? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so he. he were those recorded? ironically um, inaudible? Oh, wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> Back off the bat. Yeah, so, yeah. Again, my, uh, I'm Aaron. Uh, last time I came on these meetups, I was covered in mud because I got in a bike accident and I had a sprained wrist. Uh, Rock and roll. It's like a year ago. That was a time. Uh, anyway, so that's my introduction. Uh, but I went to the game jam because I know Mike and, and Austin and a couple other people. Uh, I literally went for two hours. <laughs> the last, the last two hours, and even then. I was able to just as in, not as a developer, and I don't even know how to use Unity. I'm just an audio engineer, composer. I do Foley for film and film composition and stuff. And even then, I, I literally went for two hours, and I w I was put to work. Just I just stood there awkwardly because it's like the last two hours is just a bunch of people with headphones in, just like staring at computers and I, you know, computers and just walked around until someone said they needed me. And it was that, uh, that guy who won best sound. He, he was like, I need a hammer noise. And I was like, okay. So I just like went on my laptop and produced like a wooden hammer noise and a metal hammer noise. And I emailed it to him and he was like, perfect. And then I wrote a song for this other game. And I don't know, even just that. Like I, So if you're on the fence about going, it was just awesome. I, let, I, I was busy the whole weekend and I made it for two hours. And it was like an amazing experience. Yeah, so I was able to help out. If, um, if you have a talent or you're just curious, people are more than willing to you know, like, have you join and help out. Yeah. It was like a little intimidating at first. It's like this nice, yeah. you know, office building with CBD and everyone's staring at computers, but I stood there for like <laughs> three minutes yeah. until someone just said, hey, I need something, and then boom, put to work, and it was awesome. So yeah. that's my takeaway. Yeah, right. cool. Just go do it, and you'll find something. Yeah, the year before, I was just going to help out, like, taking care of the space, and Ben needed artwork for his game, so I I did bring my laptop because I was very committed to not doing any work, <laughs> but so I just opened up the notepad on my phone, and I drew things with my finger, and I screenshotted it in text, and, like, sent it to him. <laughs> you know, he used it. Sure. If you have... Even if you don't have a skill, uh, like you can still come and someone will 
will show you something or you have a skill that you maybe don't know is useful or applicable to game. It was charm. Yeah. Uh, Give it character. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, uh, with that, we're pretty much uh, done with the formality of, of the meetup. So anyone that has their game is welcome to demo it. Uh, we still have more beer and there's king cake out front. You're all welcome. Can I have like a quick little announcement? Totally. Uh, I'm Calder. I help out a lot with CK, and uh, we're going to be launching our Kickstarter probably on Saturday. Uh, so if any of y'all are interested in, I guess, whatever we got as fun little gifts and stuff to give away if you guys want to help out, yeah. totally go check it out. Put a link on the Discord uh, and all that sort of fun stuff. And if you have any weird idea for events, maybe? Like, we got an event sure, space, yeah. and anything that's like game dev oriented, probably not a jam. I don't think people want to do that. Like this uh, close to well, the last one? Maybe, maybe um, you want to give a little explanation month. as to what's going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, well, CK. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I can stand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Calder. Uh, CK is a sort of barcade equivalent, just a little less sort of. A little more grimy than the uh, one downtown. <laughs> and if, I mean that in all of the lovable characteristics of grimy. Yes. Uh, yeah. And it's run sort of by local people, and it's all a bunch of Raspberry Pi sort of arcade machines with a bunch of classic sort of stuff on it. And we are currently sort of up against the wall because we need to get our hood installed so we can be zoned as a restaurant instead of a bar. Because that way we can have people of all ages come in, and instead of just a bunch of grumpy old drunk dorks coming in and playing the same game, you know, can actually kind of serve the neighborhood we're in a little better. Um, oh, awesome. That's, that's really good news. <laughs> but additionally, um, we're going to have a couple of events just going through the month for all this uh, sort of Kickstarter things. We are open. Every Saturday, 8 to 2 a.m., if you guys just want to come by, drink, uh, the bar is already operational. 8 a.m. Uh, or 8 p.m.? 8, 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. I uh, should have clarified that. And uh, five bucks, all you can play. And uh, Wednesdays, we're open again, because uh, a lot of us nerds like wrestling there. So you guys are those kind of nerds. Uh, we're open, I think, from 6 to 1 in the morning every Wednesday. But in terms of events, uh, if you guys, I guess, have any sort of thing, like any weird idea you've ever wanted to do, just sort of had some sort of public participation with it, I guess vote it by me and I can vote it by everyone else. And we'll have a whole bunch of different events kind of going on through the week. But yeah, just want to make sure that if you all are interested, that's the word. What was the DJ night? Uh, okay, so we have uh, counter sessions with uh, Bag Season Records, and those are my I went to it, and it was amazing. Yeah. It was like a bunch of local DJs who came and spun for like 20 minutes at a time, and they were doing it live there. It was awesome. Yeah, it was and so uh, we had that earlier in the month. We'll probably have that at the beginning of next month. It's kind of a monthly uh, ordeal. Yeah. You guys like sort of low five beats to uh, oh not, not just like study. Who doesn't like uh, <laughs> it? It's, it's kind of the vibe that they play there, except, you know, a little bit more hype. Uh, no, it's the vibe. But yeah, we have tournaments, we have, I guess, big old space, and if y'all are interested, just give me a holler. It's a uh, 3000 St. Quad, if you need the address, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I need to know, where, where's the entrance? I go by there and look okay. for the secret <laughs> so, <laughs> there is a secret entrance. There is a secret entrance. Yeah. We, yeah. Again, yeah. since we're technically, like... Not really clear to be open in some ways. Uh, it's literally, it's literally just that we need the hood. Installed. I have a lot of experience with uh, establishing like that. You just gotta go around the back. There's like a little gate on the side that is usually open, and either I or Judah will usually be standing out there looking tough, and uh, we'll guide you towards the back. Uh, yeah, it's it's open. I swear. <laughs> Do you have any all these events on the website or something? So come Saturday when we actually sort of launch launch the Kickstarter, I definitely plan on having a bigger sort of calendar of events that will keep updating. Currently we have a few events kind of going forward, but normal events that I totally expect we have, if you guys play Street Fighter or anything like that, we'll definitely have tourneys. Uh, 
if you guys have any games in particular you want to have a turning for, um, oh my gosh. I figured Smash Bros. So we have four different uh, yeah. TVs to right. set up Smash if y'all want to do that so we can get a pretty big turning going. Uh, and we also have CRTs if you guys want to do that really hard Smash Bros. Yeah. Different old people. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so we, we hosted the game dev meetup in December over there. It was it's a phenomenal space. Mm -hmm. uh, like I can't recommend it enough. Like all the arcade cabinets are modified with Raspberry Pi, so there's hundreds of games on each cabinet and it, it's a good time. Do they have Plebeus though? Uh, I mean we don't have Plebeus, that's a shame. I, I played a Sailor Moon beat em up. Yeah, that was, yeah, it. That, yeah we oh, crushed it. It was that's, phenomenal. That was incredible. Additionally, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, yeah, Dragons will go after you. <laughs> oh yeah, one last thing. So one thing that's pretty much been in the can for us since we launched, if we want to have one cabinet that's just kind of stuff people make. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so Game Jam games are kind of the perfect fodder for this, as well so, uh, as... You're talking like uh, Austin, that one place in Austin that has... Uh, yeah. So, or like, what's the Alamo Wonderville out in uh, New York? Yeah, so the Alamo has, has like this. Alamo uh, Draft House, the, the Fantastic Arcade. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Rest in peace, Fantastic Arcade. Uh, yeah. oh. I yeah, mentioned mention that time. after we cut the Is it just off. like a PC? You can run whatever? So, that yeah. is the plan in the future. It's one of those things where money right now goes towards the hood. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll talk after this. I might yeah. some of the yeah. parts yeah. I can build yeah. or whatever. So, the, it's also like, doesn't matter how smart the game is, doesn't matter how complete the game is, doesn't matter how like serious the game is, if anything, the goofier is probably the better in an arcade setting. Um, we are definitely happy to take pretty much all takers when it comes to that particular cab. I hear free beta testing right there. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, totally. <laughs> See how the public likes it. But yeah, uh, and if y'all have any questions, additionally, you can talk to me and try to part on but, yeah. Thanks, y'all. Uh, cool. With, with uh, that Kickstarter in question, it is tax return season, so, uh, you know, wink, wink. No, it's not. <laughs> Uncle Sam's being pretty generous. Oh, all right, all right. Um, so, we went to slight clarification in person and virtual for the mentors. Um, confirmed companies so far are. Unity, uh, Microsoft, and uh, Autonomous, um, Adobe, to be uh, Second part would be, are we going to have a, like a channel in the Discord that would be going to do that possibly? Totally. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add him to that Discord as well. Okay. Um, and basically, he's what is it? Basically, the teacher in our store, essentially. Okay. Um, but he's big into Xbox, and so uh, he was actually at the event where they announced it was happening. Okay. Um, cool. So, any questions that you have should be put in there, and he will find the answers and report back with a yeah, I can give you this answer, or hey, tell me soon. It's usually what we end up saying whenever there's something that we can talk about. So, sounds great. So, uh, yeah, with that, let's, uh, can, can I just kill the stream? Uh, yeah, uh, just a great bill. Uh, I need to thank uh, our wonderful sponsor, uh, which is just Ravelry. <laughs> and ourselves. Uh, thank you all for coming at. If it weren't for y'all coming to the meetups, we'd have nothing to organize. So, yes. you can thank yourselves for this wonderful event can we, we had. Can we thank uh, Parallax Visions for also? Uh, you can thank Parallax Visions for literally anything, even if you had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, cool.